Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a uh, tool tip about heat guns. You might think you don't have a need for a heat gun. I would submit that you have already used one. Everyone's used a heat gun because everyone's used one of these. And making, just like cooking, uh, frequently involves the use of temperature to transform something. And as such, uh, within the realm of making that I specialize in, just like cooking, becoming attuned to how to apply temperature in both direct and harsh and also potentially sometimes gentle and soft ways is really important. Um, so this is a long way of bringing you around to a new heat gun that I've added to my collection. But uh, I want to start with the first heat gun everyone uses, which is a blow dryer. Um, I'm using this one right now. It's fine. It's fine. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It just is what it is. I miss my Con Air yellow bird, but they're like 65 bucks. You can still buy them, but they're sort of dumbly expensive. And this was like $20. So I bought a couple of them. Um, blow dryers are really great for drying things with drying painted things for uh, warming. Mostly it's for setting and drying stuff. That's what I use blow dryers for. These are, don't put out enough heat to implement heat shrink tubing. They don't, yeah, they don't put out enough heat to bend plastic, uh, which in and of itself is actually kind of great. One of my favorite heat tricks with one of these is to make a very, very um, gentle oven. Um, and I do that by taking a cardboard box I might have around the shop and cutting a hole in it. And then putting this over something that I want to dry and popping the blow dryer in there and just starting it going. This is a super gentle oven. It raises the temperature to about 120 degrees, maybe, which really isn't enough to melt most industrial things, most products. Um, so you don't have to worry about the fact that you're applying too much heat to a thing. The cardboard hot box has been a regular part of my repertoire since the very earliest days of making things. Now, when I became more professional uh, and I could afford to spend some of my income on tools that would help me earn more income, well, I moved up to uh, a corded heat gun. And this is DeWalt's version of this. Milwaukee makes one. I have one of each. Uh, I couldn't find the Milwaukee for some reason. I must have lent it to, oh no, the Milwaukee heat gun's at my house. That's why I was doing something over there with it. At any rate, um, most corded heat guns operate about the same way. They've got a temperature control on the back. They put out usually two speeds, low, and high. Uh, and DeWalt has this nice thing up here so you can actually get really up and close and not burn yourself on the uh, burner here. I'll turn that off. Um, these heat guns are great. You should have one. You should have one in your collection. These are great for heat shrink tubing. These are great for softening up plastic like Warbla or Kydex or ABS or Styrene or acrylic, it works with all of those things. Um, one of the issues though is it can get incredibly hot. Uh, and it's very easy when applying heat to go too far. And you only learn how not to go too far by going too far. The only way you can make whipped cream is if your first time making it, you go all the way to butter, which is just like one notch past whipped cream. And then you always know where to stop. Um, with these, they foment mistakes because uh, they can get really hot. And you can, you know, if you're doing working with acrylic, you have to know that it's hygroscopic. It draws water in. So you heat up uh, acrylic too fast. Uh, the water bubbles can, the tiny water molecules that are in the acrylic uh, turn to steam and bubble inside the acrylic, and that can ruin your whole day. Polycarbonate is the same. Um, so how do you deal with applying uh, too much heat? Well, like I said, it has this half setting, but even still, I've gotten into, it, it, it can get so hot down here close to the element that the burn happens so quickly 
Therefore, for some applications, I want something that is between the gentleness of this and the harshness of this. Enter the battery-powered heat gun. Wait a minute, let me get a battery. I, I saw this. I was literally just thinking, hmm, I wonder what new tools DeWalt has made in the cordless system, which I have. And I saw it made a cordless heat gun, and I was like, it takes a lot of battery power to heat a heating element. Like, it may be one of the most power-intensive things to do to, uh, so these create heat by shorting through some copper wires in here that, or not copper, but they're something that can handle being red hot, nichrome, I'm not even sure. Uh, but there's wires in here that are shorted, so electricity, uh, angry pixies build up and they, they cause the, the wire to glow red and then the air blows past that and that's how you get your heat. But shorting something and putting enough angry pixie electrons into it to get it to glow red is very, very power intensive. So I just bought this, the tool only, uh, because I was like, how useful is that going to be? I kind of want to know. And the answer is... It's phenomenally useful because it is because it is a perfect medium between these two poles. Here we go. It is a perfect medium between these two poles. Uh, I this doesn't put out a lot of heat. Their solution to the extreme battery draw of high heat is that they don't put out high heat. Like. This will never burn me if my hand is here. It gets warm, but it's never gonna burn me out here. And that is kind of perfect. It allows me to creep up on a heating situation where I am not sure how it is going to go. Sometimes, well, frequently, I am working with materials I haven't tried before or haven't used in a long time. Uh, and so I like to creep up on my solutions rather than coming from the top down. And this allows me to do it. Uh, it only has two settings, like the, like the corded, a high and a low. Let's see, that's the high, that's the low. Uh, this totally will activate heat shrink tubing and um, heat shrink lugs with the low temperature solder that melts inside the heat shrink. Mm, this is so perfect for those because it won't burn the wires around your thing like this will. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, well, yeah, this is a really simple, quick and dirty 10 minute tool tip about heat guns and why they're necessary for the process and why maybe you should invest in one of these middle ground battery powered heat guns. Thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. Yeah, I think I've covered everything. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. One of the things I love about this channel is that we don't make how-to videos so much as we make what happened videos. And what almost always happens are mistakes and screw-ups. In fact, they're completely integral to making and honestly to being a person. And to celebrate this, Tested has a new batch of demerit badges for the screw-ups you will encounter in the shop. From left to right, we have touching your paint job, assembling things backwards, losing a tiny screw or part, gluing your fingers together, and smashing your thumb. And frankly, if you haven't done both of these, even if you're not a maker, I just don't feel like you've experienced enough of the world. I'm not saying get out a hammer and smash your thumb, but I will tell you that the blacker your fingernail after the injury, the less it's gonna hurt in the long run. I almost forgot, these make excellent additions to your shop apron and they are available at tested-store.com.